Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. Today it's gonna be a little bit special, well different from usual, because I'm not gonna show you how to make an effect, but more how to use an effect. In this case it's not really an effect because it's a composition, it's composite and transform. Uh, this is the composition I use the most. I think it's quite versatile and yeah, very practical. So first of all, what is a composition? A composition is what appears when you click the bottom corner of a clip. By default, it goes to wipe, which is more of a transition. This used to be called transitions, by the way. You have lots of them here. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of them today, but maybe I'll talk about another one another day, uh, if I think one of them deserves it, but not as good as Composite and Transform. Um, so yeah, Composite and Transform. You have multiple things. The first thing is the compositing track. You always have that, uh, no matter the composition you choose, you'll always have a composition track. We'll talk about how you choose it later, but automatically it will always be the one underneath. Then you have the compositing mode, uh, and these are, um, well, there's a lot of them. I will not talk about all of them because some of them I've never used. And I, well, I would say they're useless, but it's more like very specific uses. If you want more info about how you use these modes, I would go on Wikipedia and look up blend modes and you'll have a lot of information about how they work. And if it's not on Wikipedia, um, you, you'll find more information, I swear. Like, these are the same on every single design program. And also you can just try them. So for example, like this one looks weird. Looks weird. Like, often they will look weird, unless it's black and white. Um, then you have all of the transform part of the clip, because that was the composite, this is the transform. And so this sort, I would always check it, because it allows you to zoom in. If you don't have this sort, you can't zoom in. I don't know why they made this this way, but yeah, it didn't used to be like that. I am an old lady. Um, then rotate from center, I would also check it, because uh, if you rotate, it will rotate like this, and if you don't have this, it will rotate around this corner, which is just weird. So yeah, rotate from center. Then you have all of the normal moving stuff. Uh, if you move it, it will change it here. Then you have the opacity and rotation, which we've talked about. Uh, I will remove this because it's ugly, but let's continue talking about this. Oh yeah, if you want to look for something easily, you can just type a letter, and then it will go to this letter. Um, so composite and transform, I use it uh, often. For example, you could do like an image within an image like this, um, and then maybe you don't like that you can't see the back that well. And so I will go and use the deprecated blur because it's my favorite because the other ones are not as precise. Um, but yeah, like this. That's kind of weird, but in some cases it can weird it can work. Um, so we'll just have a very simple thing with just two clips, and I'll add a fur clip, it will be my dragon, for example. Um, it's just a still image, but... The composite and transform stack. So if you have a first composite and transform um, between two clips here, and then I choose a size, like right now it's way too big. Uh, yeah, like this looks better. Uh, I will change its color really quick because it doesn't really work with my blue water, my blue dragon is not very... Noticeable, so I will make it another color. That has nothing to do with whatever we were doing, but yeah. Uh, and then I could make it move, for example. So, well, it won't flap its wings because, yeah, I, I'm not gonna do that. But <laughs> across the screen, like this, for example. Okay, I'll just shorten everything because I don't need it to be that long. The last keyframe will move with the composition transform, by the way, so that's interesting to know. Okay. Um, and so yeah, it's moving across the screen, like this. Yeah. Um, and then, if I want to do the the picture-in-picture picture thing I did earlier, now the dragon is only on the top one, which is exactly what I wanted in here. Like, I wanted it to go across just the top picture. But then, let's say I want to add some text, for example. Project, add title clip, and I'll add dragon, if I can type, it's better. Um, let's just use the same color as the dragon. And I hope you like this font, and if you don't, don't tell me, because this is my handwriting. Well, not exactly, but yeah, I, I tried to make a font and then I never finished it, but I still use it sometimes. 
Um, so you don't actually need a composite and transform for this because it can just show up. But if you do use composite and transform, right now it will go on the top one, on the dragon. But I don't want it to be on the dragon, and so I will change the compositing track to be on V1, V1 being the back ways. If I do V2, it will be here, and then if I go V1, it will be on top. And then if I want to, I can even move the whole thing by putting a composite and transform on the bottom one, and it will be on black automatically on the background, and then everything will move with it. So that's very practical, as you can see. Well, now you have sequences, which also allow you to do like moving stuff at once, but we'll talk about sequences another time. I've been using it a lot, by the way, so I'm very happy it exists. So yeah, that was my first example, which took forever. But now you understand compositing tracks and simple compositions with Composite and Transform. So one of the ways I use Composite and Transform is for text effects. So let's add a title clips and write like waves because yeah, originally. And I like it black, uh, white, but also um, it will not work if it's not white uh, or black. And I wish I could make it blurry. So I will not show you all of the blurs, but none of the blurs will work. I'll just choose a few randomly. And disgusting. Disgusting. So yeah, it doesn't work with alpha images, and so to make it blurry, my way to change it is actually, you can click here now, that's beautiful, um, add rectangle, and I add a black rectangle in the back. Now you can't see anything, but if you blur it, uh, I will use the deprecated blur, by the way, because it's the only one that has keyframes, and I want keyframes. Um, Let's blur it. But it's black, and I wish I had the background, and so Composite and Transform comes to the rescue, and we use Screen, because Screen makes black transparent. And then you have your blurry text. And you can also use, at the same time, the fact that you have a transformation, so add, for example, some zoom, like this. And it will like come into focus at the same time as it moves. So yeah, you see what I mean. So that's one of the main things I use it for. Then if you want not white text, but black text, I would recommend, uh, so you do your text black and then your background white. And so it won't work for right now. But if you change the compositing to multiply, you will have the same kind of effect. So what else can you use composite and transform for? This is like some crumpled paper. I don't need the back actually here. Um, and I wish I could write on it. So I will add some text. I don't know about you, but I write in blue. So I'll use some blue. And then composite and transform once more. And then you can just like, honestly, what I usually do is I just try them all. And some of them you'll see, like, you can see the crumple underneath, which I think like for this, it looks kind of cool. Like this one looks good. Um, let's just zoom in a little so we can see what's happening more precisely. I think that that looks pretty nice. Um, some of them don't work at all, of course, but yeah. There's definitely a problem with my phone, though. Because, <laughs> like, what's happening here? Uh, yeah, so I think, like, this one, hard light, is pretty good for crumpled paper, for example. And another thing I use Composition Transform a lot for, because, like, the paper thing I never use. This I use a lot. So if I want to do a transition between two clips um, when I make my videos, like, you know, I, I do some weird videos, fun videos. Um, and so one of the things that we use a lot is overlays. And it's not that much of a thing in other circles, I think. So here you have an overlay that's very long. There's a lot of things on it. Um, in my case here, I just want to use this short part here. So I will take that and put it on my 
transition. Also, you can see it's not the right size. So that's where composition transform is quite useful. So composition transform. So I will need to zoom in. So distort and oh, that's interesting. But I can't zoom in if I don't distort. But if I distort, it distorts it. That's shitty. Okay, so I don't have a good solution for this, but like for me here, it doesn't matter because I don't really care about the shape. But I think I need to report this. Hmm. Should I? I think that's a bug, right? That's not a feature. Uh, so now we're zoomed in, but we also need a screen thing, and so now it should work. Exactly as I want it, yeah. Uh, you might have seen that there's some purple, and so I can remove the opacity at the beginning and the end to make sure it's like smooth. So yeah, you have other kind of transitions, like, for example, this one that I use quite a bit, that goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. I mean, it's all the same kind of things, it's all... Uh, this one is a bit different, so like, this one, it's not a transition, it's like a very cheesy effect, but sometimes... Sometimes you want cheesy effects, you know, if you really like the sea, you want little hearts on it, no. Um, so yeah, Composite and Transform, and here you have multiple options. Um, something like Screen will make the hearts show up quite white, but if you go like Lighten, you will see the hearts better, for example. Uh, in this case, it depends on the color of the background, I, I actually. I mean, just, you know, you try them all. Oh yeah, Plus is good as well for this one. It's very white, but it can work, you know. It's quite cheesy though, like, yeah. So next example, uh, I will remove what I've just done because I don't need it. It will be this one with the colored paper. So here we have torn paper transitions. Okay, so you'll see what it does. It's like this. So to use it, you need to use chroma key. I will not explain what I'm doing because, I mean, it's just chroma keying. It's really not that hard. Okay, so once you've chroma keyed it, um, you'll have to do multiple things. So now only the paper is left, so that's good. Uh, I will have to overlay, so I will just put everything on top of each other. Actually, I need one more track because I will copy my chroma key here. So I will remove the green one, I think, yeah, here. Okay, sorry, uh, for the things. You need to have your two tracks on top of each other, and then you will have a track with destination out. So on my track here, um, we have some green and white and some transparency. The white, the black is transparency. Everything that is transparent will be only what is left here. Destination in is the opposite. But here we need destination out. And then if we add the, uh, the background, we'll have something opening like this. And now we just need the paper to make it look good. And so we add the torn paper transition that we have on top. And so I didn't talk about the bitwise ones at all. Um, these are quite interesting as well when it's all black and white. So if I take my black and white text from earlier again. And... So yeah, the bitwise ones are... One color it will be transparent, one won't, and then you'll have some inversion as well, when there's a n in there. Oh yeah. And then, so you, you can then also combine the different things we've done. Um, okay, I think that's quite a lot. That was quite a long video already. Um, My best advice is, I mean, every time I need to do something, I just try them all and I'll, I see what it looks like. And 
Like it's fast. You can just scroll on the thing and it changes them. And you can do the same here, by the way. Um, if you're looking for a specific effect, just try them all. Yeah, that's my that's my advice. And then at one point you'll remember which ones you've been using the most. So yeah. Hopefully my next video won't be in three months, but maybe we'll see. <laughs> I've been quite busy. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that uh, I've started a small business doing like, I don't know, art kind of. Um, and I've been sharing some of the reels I've made uh, for that on my Instagram. So would you be interested, by the way, in like how to make a stop motion video with Ked on Live? Okay, goodbye, bye bye. I don't know, I don't know. And now I need to edit this and it will take forever and I don't want to.